talked a little bit this morning about uh, electric vehicles and um, anybody that, uh, that knows me knows I'm a, I'm a huge fan of, uh, of EVs um, and uh, it's, uh, I thought we might just talk a little bit about some of the trials and tribulations. Uh, there's a couple of people in this room that did a trip with me to Mildura a few months ago and we pulled into Mildura with only about 1% left and uh, you suffer from a thing called range anxiety. Um, now, I've owned a car for a while, I knew we were going to be okay, but uh, there were a couple of people there who were uh, absolutely panicking. Um, so my, my personal journey, I, uh, I test drove a Model S in, in June 2014, and I learned two things on that uh, at that time. Firstly, I was going to buy uh, an EV, um, and I will talk exclusively about Tesla today. It's a little bit like... Uh, when you talk about food delivery services, you can talk about Foodora and all of these other ones, or you can talk about Uber Eats, which is 97% of the market. So um, in, in Australia, Tesla has about those kind of numbers. Uh, so I drove a Model S, uh, fell in love, I knew I was going to buy one, and I actually came home that night, and at the time, one of my businesses was, um, and still is, uh, a large developer and owner of petrol stations. And uh, we had three projects on the go at the time. And I just, I, I stayed up all night and I rewrote the business plan because I knew I didn't want to own those assets in, in 10 years' time. And uh, certainly we're on track to, to be out of that business within, within five years. So I ordered a Model X, and as is the way with Tesla, uh, it didn't arrive on time. Um, it was a year late. Elon's never missed a promise. He's always achieved everything he's ever said he's going to do, but uh, he's usually late. Um, so uh, it was meant to arrive in January 2017, and actually I then deferred it till the end of the year because they announced they were going to do a faster one, and I wanted that one. Um, so, so far I've done 60,000 kilometres and the exciting thing for me, because people think it's way out in the future, is autonomous. Um, over half of those kilometres have been with the car driving, driving itself and me just kind of sitting there as, a, uh, as an observer. Um, I recently did a trip to Queensland and back and uh, for that particular journey the car drove 94.7% of the way there and back, um, with me only intervening at roundabouts and, uh, and roadworks. Um, the other really exciting thing with, with this new form of technology is you've got over-the-air updates. So um, Tesla has a great sales pitch where it says the day you buy the car is the oldest it will ever be. And so I've had 12 major updates. I'll come out in the morning, there'll be a message on the screen that says congratulations, your car can now do this. And it might be autonomous wiper blades that use the cameras to work out how, how much rain is happening. Um, or um, in fact, since I bought the car, it's now got 4% more range because very smart people have updated the algorithm, how all of the systems work, and I can now go further than I could uh, when I purchased the car a couple of years ago. So just to set the scene uh, of where we are in Australia at the moment, and, and the numbers are a little bit hard to get because um, they're not all publicly available, but we talk about 1,500 cars that are sold today in Australia uh, are, are EVs, not hybrids, but um, full electric vehicles. Um, you compare that to the world leader, which is of course Norway, where they're nearly at half. So it shows it's possible. I mean, they've got huge government subsidies and a, and a population that's incredibly motivated, um, but it shows what possible is possible. And I want to talk about that half a little bit further. Actually, sorry, I'll just looking at the, um, just look at that curve. So we've got 2010, 2016, 2018, um, and I can tell you in 2019 that has continued to rocket up. So um, there's a, a bit of a debate about, you know, is hydrogen going to be what's going to be in cars or is it going to be battery electric? It's a bit like um, VHS versus beta, for those of you old enough in the room. Uh, VHS has won, EVs have won. Maybe in the future we'll do more with hydrogen, particularly in trucking, um, but certainly for the foreseeable future it's going to be battery electric. Um, and this particular chart we're talking about, this was actually released, it's a year old, by EMO, and it was incredibly controversial at the time because they doubled the amount of EVs they expected to be on the road and, uh, to 50% by 2037. Um, that was with their strong, strong growth prediction. Um, that's now looking, um, they've really undershot the mark just based on those recent sales figures. So that's kind of exciting. But they're saying by 2037, half the vehicles on the road will be uh, electric vehicles. And I'm telling you that as of today, Norway's already achieving that. Um, so this, this video, we talk about the Tesla effect and of what's happened. So um, uh, Chevrolet have been producing large-scale electric vehicles since about 2010, Tesla since 2012. 
and this video just kind of shows how that's developed. they were plagued with production problems in the early days. Model 3 comes online and just goes absolutely ballistic. So everyone likes to shoot down Tesla and have a bit of a go at them. Uh, we're very good at that in Australia. But if you look at the, the two, the second and third lines, you've got 150,000 Model S's. So since in their entire life, they've produced 150,000, 150,000 volts as well. We're up to 174 Model 3's. Tesla are now producing 6,000 cars a week. Um, so 300,000 cars a year just of the Model 3. So in the next year, they will produce more of just that one model than we've produced in the entire life of um, Chevrolet Bolts and, and Model S's. So that graph we saw before is just about to go completely bonkers. Next year, although actually knowing Elon, it'll be the year after, the Model Y is gonna be released, and um, that's a segment of the market that's 50% bigger than the sedan market. So they're predicting 450,000 sales uh, a year. So um, the world is changing, and it's changing even faster than maybe we all, we all realise. Um, so the big issue, obviously, and the big change that you've got to do is you don't pull up in, into a petrol station. You have, to, um, you have to learn to charge in a different way. And the way I like to talk about it is you've got to think about your car as a big mobile phone. And that is every night you come home, you plug your phone in, you wake up in the morning, it's got 100%. And you do the same with an EV. And there's really kind of four, four options, although the last option has kind of disappeared, certainly in the last 18 months. So at residential charging, you can charge at home and you might get eight to 11 uh, kilometres per hour just out of a normal power point. And if things go really badly, you've always got a charger in your car and you can plug into any power point. You might just have to sit there a little while to, uh, to charge up. If you've got a dedicated charger, you might get 30 on single phase, 30 k's an hour, or on a three phase, you will get uh, up to 70, 75 k's an hour. Public parking, um, it's... Uh, uh, it's just rolling out all over the country and we've even got some local government areas in our own region here, such as Ararat, that are, are going into this very aggressively um, and you'll get somewhere between 30 and 70 k's an hour. Uh, great if you park, park somewhere for work, so you then don't need to have a charger at home. And of course DC, DC charging, so you may have seen the Tesla fast chargers, uh, particularly if you're from Ballarat, up at Wendery Village and that gets you at the moment um, up to about 7K, 700 k's an hour and they're just about to be upgraded to uh, 1,600 kilometres per hour of charge. So um, it's kind of, the, the battery swap thing came about when the charge was really, really slow. And now that we've got these fast chargers, um, Audi and Porsche are talking about doing 300 kilowatts, so about 2,000 kilometres per hour of charge. You can only store about 600 k's, so uh, they're pretty quick. I can't imagine that, uh, that battery swap model being, um, being viable anymore. The living with an EV is, is a little bit different and you do have to be conscious of what you're doing. So what I'll typically do, like most people, I'll wake in the morning and I'll grab my phone and have a bit of a look at, at Facebook and uh, see what's happened overnight that I've missed. Um, but what I also do is I, I, I turn on the car. So I start warming up the car, 
car's always connected to apps on your phone, put on your seat heaters. Uh, I live in Ballarat, so for 360 days a year I turn the heater on. Uh, for five days a year I turn the air conditioning on. And uh, so when I come out to the car, it's, uh, it's ready to take me wherever I need to go. Depending on what my daily plan is, I'll normally have the car charged to about 400 Ks, depending on, on my appointments. I'll unplug, I'll sit in the car. Once again, the car's connected so it knows what my appointments are for the day. I activate that first appointment and the car then navigates me to it. As of October in the United States, it'll take a little lot longer here, the car will then drive me all the way uh, from point to point. Um, I'm now getting the red cross, Brendan. I'm, I'll, I'll try and wrap it up as quick as I can. Um, the, and of course, if I'm working in Melbourne, at my Melbourne office, uh, I've got two car parks with charging. At the end of the day, I come back out, I've got 400 k's again. Uh, it just really becomes a non-issue. You, you almost get to the point where you don't think about it. And then, of course, I return home and start the, uh, start the process all again. Uh, I'm lucky at my house, I've got a, I've got a battery and solar system. Uh, that's not enough to keep because of the amount of Ks that I do, but it certainly uh, helps offset my, my usage. Um, if I'm going cross-country, driving to Queensland, I spend a lot of time in, in uh, Horsham or Northern Victoria, uh, I'll usually charge to 100%. So depending on your model, you've got 600 Ks of range. Uh, the navigation system autom automatically works out where I need to charge if I need to on the way. For example, if I'm driving to Queensland or to Sydney, it'll tell me you need to stop in Gundagai for 22 minutes. Go and use the bathrooms, go and have a coffee, go and have lunch, and I come back and I'm ready to continue my journey. I choose accommodation based on choosing two different hotels, typically, that are in my price bracket, and then I'll choose the one that's got EV charging. That's what makes my final choice, and that means I start every day, uh, the next day of my journey, uh, with, uh, with 100%. But if it all goes wrong, and if we do, we do run out, there is only one option, and that's the, the flatbed that takes you to the nearest charger. Um, hasn't happened to me yet, touch wood. Uh, I've certainly gone very close, and that's why you use the navigation all the time, because the algorithm is constantly calculating and telling you if you're in trouble. I have certainly have had it tell me a couple of times that I need to slow down to maybe 100 or even 90, uh, just to extend my range. Uh, but it's pretty, pretty, pretty clever. So a few myths, and uh, I'm going to try and wrap up as quickly as I can. The, uh, there is this myth that there's no charging. There is charging everywhere, and it is just rolling out at a, an absolutely rapid, a rapid pace. Um, range, now we can get 600 k's. The new Roadster that's coming out next year will have 1,000 kilometres of range. Um, performance used to be the big bugbear. Everyone used to make fun of electric vehicles being slow and not pacey. Um, you know, the, uh, there's plenty of videos online that show Bugattis and uh, Lamborghinis now being embarrassed by, by um, stock standard Teslas. Um, charging time. At, uh, at 250 kilowatts, I can get 120 kilometres in five minutes. So that's no longer really an issue for me. But of course, running costs is the big advantage. The only co cost you have with an EV is uh, tyres, as you already would, uh, your wiper blades, uh, your washer fluid. Um, and brakes don't really even come into it because your brakes typically last 250,000 uh, kilometres. Uh, there are about 7,000 Teslas on the road in Australia and they've only ever had four sets of brake pads changed across that entire fleet. Um, and the, the big hidden gem that everybody is missing, certainly in this part of the world, is tourism. So at the moment, everybody just wants to drive, drive their EV and go on a road trip. And we're particularly bad in the Grampians of taking advantage of this. If you go across into South Australia, every winery uh, has, has EV charging. People love to come, charge up, spend money in your winery, and then uh, fill up the boot with, uh, with wine. And uh, that's a massive opportunity for any tourism businesses uh, that are in the room. Lovers and haters, tall poppy syndrome. Um, it is, you're either someone like me that just is, has drunk the Kool-Aid, uh, or you're one of the haters that wants to, uh, wants to bring it down. And probably the big one that's gone around Facebook recently is this post. This is from the Nullarbor, and this is a diesel generator charging an electric car, which sounds absolutely absurd. Uh, but as Alan talked about in terms of filling the gaps in the, uh, in the electricity network, this is a great example. The irony, that car uses less diesel than a diesel car does, because obviously the generator is incredibly efficient. Um, but of course this, uh, this is the kind of thing we see. The other hater thing that we see a lot of is Tesla fires. You're 11 times less likely to have your car catch on fire if it's an EV. But of course 
it's very interesting when a, when a Tesla catches on fire, more exciting than a Ford Focus. And um, so it makes, makes for great social media. Um, if a Tesla catches, or an electric vehicle catches on fire, it's a very slow operation. It starts and then once it's going, it's, it's incredibly spectacular. Um, but a petrol car catches on fire and uh, you, you, you have seconds, not minutes. And that's it. I hope I've convinced you all to go out and buy one. $70,000, you can buy a Tesla, uh, Tesla Model 3 now.